Hello and welcome back to the Join Dota League Season 3 here on Hefla TV 1. This is going to be the second game of Best of Two series between your family and Bananas in Pajamas. I'll be one of your casters today. I'm Grandis V and I'll be joined uh, by Bane Chief for this game. Welcome to the cast again. Yeah, because we saw Bananas Pajamas, what many would consider an upset, taking down your family pretty dominatingly. And now we're going to be seeing Bananas Pajamas. Can they do it again or will your family tie things up? Yeah, I don't know, last game I was very impressed by Bananas and Pajamas' decision making. Once they saw that Ravage was used and all the ultimates were down for your family and they'd gotten a couple of kills, they just went straight onto the high ground. They knew that they could take the towers fairly easily with their Pugna and they executed well, even though it was a close game as far as the metrics are concerned. I think just those couple of mistakes really cost your family very heavily. And honestly, I didn't feel the Morphling pick last game. It just didn't come online fast enough for them to really make anything happen with it. Even though he got some decent farm in lane, was able to get some good CS, I think they would have been better suited picking something that could counteract the push coming out from Bananas and Pajamas and synergize better with their Death Prophet. Yeah, because we are actually seeing Bananas and Pajamas. Have they gone AFK? <laughs> um, uh, because... Maybe just going for the no ban strat, I mean, could be an option. I think it'll be fairly obvious soon enough whether or not they are AFK, and I mean, I'd expect that might be the issue. We might be having a remake here, and game two, um, I don't know, next level mind games coming in from Bananas and Pajamas. Yeah, As they've already got all five of the heroes picked out, including bans, and they're just like, yeah, we'll just sit back to one second, and seconds. no, this looks like this is going to be a remake, surely. Nope. Bzz. Time out. <laughs> die, die, yep. Uh, let's see. Let me check the chat. Um, it is... Yeah. Roy Mustang has disconnected from the game who is their drafter. Um, ah. So it looks like we're... Let's see. Remaking. To go. I'd hope so. Well, yeah. That, considering now that it looks like that your family are banning either. And... Oh, yeah. Everybody's disconnected. I think we're going into a new lobby. Okay, I'm going to go disconnect. Awesome! That's with attempt number one! <laughs> this was just a trial. Uh, yeah, so... <laughs> Hopefully we'll be able to find the lobby soon enough. Um, yeah. There it is. We have a lobby. Yeah, so we'll, we'll get into game two very shortly, and hopefully everybody will stay connected and we'll have the full draft coming up. Uh, no real reason to go back to a lobby screen. Remakes usually are pretty fast, and everybody should be able to find it quickly. Uh, but that said, it is going to be a little bit awkward, not a whole lot to talk about just yet. So, yeah, was, you Benji, know, how has your day been going? Ah, uh, pretty cool, just getting things tidied up and... Uh, just weightlifting and just general stuff, you know. It's the weekend, I'm not working 9 to 5 at the moment. Well, obviously not on the weekend. Meaning it's been, you know, just getting all that stuff you can never get done done while you're working. Yeah, I guess so. Yep, looks like we're going to get into the lobby quickly. Uh, looks like we had an admin AFK. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah, a little bit of a... a a little bit of a shame, a little, especially considering the delays we've had at the beginning, but we should be going right into it again. Hopefully. Maybe. <laughs> Possibly. Well, I don't know. Looks like everybody's going to load in properly. Come on, Kranich, you can do it. There we go. Everybody's loaded in, and hopefully we won't have any more connection issues. Yeah, probably we'll be having these bands coming out very, very soon as... It's a bit like Schrodinger's Dota 2 game right now. We're not sure if it's going on or not. It is going on as these bands are coming out. Boom, 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 really quickly. Brewmaster, Lycan, taken out by your family. Doom, banned out by Banez and Pajamas. So our base captains are uh, at their keyboards and at the ready. Yep, and the interesting thing is going to be, are your family going to ban out or try and remove the Viper from the possibility of Banan's Pajamas picking him up? Just because, you know, uh, Roy fucking Mustang did an amazing job with him last game. Yeah, Lost definitely. For now, they do have the first pick, and he won't be banned. So available in the pool, your family going to start out with the Scarath Mage yet again. Uh, their Scarath Mage played very well in Game 1, even though they weren't able to take away the win. I think he had some really good ultimates, and, I don't know, his game impact was solid enough to warrant being picked up again. Yeah, but Bananja Pajamas, 
Are they just going to pick up what they picked up last time? They can get the, both the Void and the uh, Viper right now. Although the Void didn't really do that much in the game, considering compared to what most Voids do. Yeah, he had like that one Chrono that was really good, but I think you could get the same impact and maybe even more out of a Tide Hunter pick towards your offlane. Um, but they'll go ahead and pick up the Faceless Void as well. Is it also going to be a Viper on the second pick? Or we're just going to go for a rerun of game one. Okay, no, it's going to be the Faceless Void Death Prophet. Now, this opener is incredibly scary. It gives them a lot of good teamfight potential, as well as the ability to mow down towers with the Death Prophet. If you're able to catch a good Chronosphere, Exorcism does an absurd amount of physical damage. Skyrath Mage, Wraith King, I don't care which hero you are, you're not really standing up against that, especially uh, before your team has some basic aura item up. items up. Oh my goodness, kind of lost my words there for a second, but... A Vladimir's offering, I think, is going to be very important for your family to get up against the physical damage of these two, and later on, they'll want an Assault Cure, to be sure. Um, but yeah, I don't know. This is a very scary start of the draft coming out from Bananas and Pajamas. To go. Yeah, you know, the Faces Void Death Prophet, they're two cores, but they're two very good cores. On the other side, though, we do actually see the Skyrath Mage being picked up with, uh, I mean, the Wraith King picked up with the Skyrath Mage, and that's a very nice uh, roaming combo. The Wraith King with the stun, and the Skyrath Mage with just the five trillion nukes. Yeah, definitely great potential to get kills early on, even if the Wraith King's lagging behind, doesn't have boots early on. Uh, the Concussive Shot, great for getting in range for that stun, and both of them have a lot of magical nuke damage that they can get off. Especially when you have the uh, Silence coming up from the Skyrath Mage, it's pretty scary to go up against, and Death Prophet a fairly easy gank by those two. Yes, we are going to be having this. The Pugna is going to get banned out by your family this time, and I do agree with that ban just because they've got the Death Prophet as well, and that is a huge amount of possible push, and the Viper also gets removed. And, you know, you just have to know that Roy is feeling pretty good with himself that when the hero that you as a stand-in came in and played gets respect banded out. Honestly, I'm not sure if that's entirely a respect ban. Viper just a really scary cure to be playing all around. But as you said, Roy Mustang had a wonderful Viper in game one. And, yeah, silently smiling to himself in his chair at home. I'd like to see um, Bananas and Pajamas pick themselves up as Shadow Shaman outside of the... Um, Second banning stage, especially since your family opted to ban out the Pugna and Viper. I think Pugna's not really the greatest pick. Um, I think he's just a little bit too greedy. You'd like to have something else to initiate the team fights along with that Faceless Void, or possibly something that can put more damage into the Chrono, maybe an Invoker even. Um, but yeah. Centaur banned out by Bananas and Pajamas, and I think it's a fairly no-brainer Shadow Shaman pick here, and it will be. Yep, Shadow Shaman, possibly the most picked hero right now in the current meta in the JDL. I think actually picked up in about, round about 70% of games. But uh, either way, he's going to be coming in with that to push strategy as well with his ultimate. And your family, they have got the opportunity to pick up that Tide Hunter once again. The Tide Hunter Ravage, he missed a few of them, but he's still a very good hero. Yeah, I don't know. I think your family, there's... A window early on that they could play hyper aggressive and shut down bananas and pajamas and then they could also just try to turtle it out and uh, hold high ground long enough in order to get their carries farmed to where they could contest up against the faceless void death prophet that said faceless void death prophet scales very well into the late game as does shadow shaman so i think their best bet is just to try to kill them early and frequently uh, make sure this death prophet doesn't get her level 11 up early on and make sure faceless void doesn't get the farm to back up his own Chronospheres, so it's going to be mandatory that the uh, other heroes are putting the damage into the Chrono. I don't know, I, I think Bananas and Pajamas have just gotten away with murder here with these first three picks, usually something you've never seen given away. Yeah, but the only other hero that possibly could go into this lineup would be something like a Lycan, but sadly that was banned out in this first stage of bans like he always is. As we do see, Morana gets picked up, and... And Marana, interestingly, at the beginning of uh, 6.81, was possibly the most picked up hero uh, in the game, but has fallen off a little bit as the Death Ball push meta has taken fully hold. But still a very good hero, huge amounts of uh, flexibility, huge amounts of damage possibly being thrown out along with that arrow, if you can hit it. And we are waiting for this last pick of the second stage, Damn coming up in Bananas so Pajamas. Do they go for more push right now? I'm not sure if they need to. Honestly, I think with Death Prop and Shadow Shaman, that's plenty for the rest of your lineup. So just make sure your other lanes are self-sufficient and strong, and make sure you pick up another support that can roam around with that Shadow Shaman and get some kills of their own. 
Um, but they could be going for some more push, maybe a nature's profit for themselves. Um, Invoker, as stated previously, would offer some nice pushing with the Forge Spirits as well as Necronomicon. Um, yeah, it could be an option. I think your family's first three picks are going to be in the tri lane. Whether that's aggressive or defensive is still yet to be seen. And as soon as they get a couple of kills in lane, they can allow the Skyrath Mage and Wraith King to roam around and try to get some uh, kills in the other lanes to help out whatever offlander they have, as well as to make sure this Death Prophet doesn't get out of control. Yep, yeah, as we are waiting for this last pick from Alarm's Pajamas. And they still do need a, another support and their carry, assuming the Death Prophet is going to go middle and Faces Void is going to go in the offlane situation like he normally is. And as for another support, you've got a lot that you can theoretically go for. Uh, a lot of very nice supports. Uh, go for something like a, a Shadow Demon has been popular, so they can't pick up, up with the Marana. But the Weaver is going to get picked up and that's going to be their carry. Mm. Probably. I would have liked the Weaver last game, uh, just with the lack of stuns that they have, but currently your family have three heroes that are decent at shutting down the Weaver. They have a Wraithfire Blast to stun him in place, they have a Silence, which is great at keeping the Weaver from using Sakuchi as well as Time Lapse, and then they can combo the Marana Arrow on top of that, so they have ways of dealing with it. Uh, but still, if Weaver's able to get an early Lincoln Sphere online, they don't have a lot of good ways to keep yeah, this Weaver exactly in simple. check. Uh, Wraithfire Blast, very easy to disjoint with the Shikuchi, and as long as you're able to block the Silence coming out for the uh, Skyrath Mage, uh, you'll be fine and dandy. So it's still a solid pick. I think they could have gone for something a little more mid-game centric and a little less greedy, but it will shore up their late game a lot, and I don't think that's really going to be an option for your family to do. Um, but that's... they're going to prove me wrong and pick up a Drow Ranger. Wow, well, that's obviously going to be their carry right now. So presumably, this Moron is going to be going mid or on the off lane with the Scarlet Mage, Wraith King, a support combo coming out once again. And a Drow Ranger, how do you feel about that pick right now? I really don't like it, to be honest. I think, especially without Visage, Drow Ranger is just a really difficult hero to pull off. Um, it's so position dependent and doesn't really offer that much outside of the extra range damage that you get. She needs her levels fast, I think, yeah, which kind of forces you into the hand of Midas early on to make sure you get your level 11 and level 16 ASAP, um, so you can push down the waves, and then later on, I don't know, she's just so easy to kill, especially if you have any way to jump her. Shadow Shaman, Blink Dagger, Faceless Void, Time Walk into Chronosphere, and Weaver is very easily going to be able to solo kill this Draw Ranger once he gets up a damage item. Yeah, I'm not crazy about the Draw Ranger pick, but... She is able to put out a lot of damage if she's able to get enough room and doesn't completely feed early on. I do agree as well as we do see the Enchantress getting picked out and really I feel the main issue with the Drow Ranger is simply she doesn't do a lot in terms of Death Ball versus Death Ball, especially in the first 20-25 minutes. Yeah, I don't know, especially with an Enchantress pickup by Bananas and Pajamas, I think they have great ways of putting pressure onto your family early on. Enchantress Shadow Shaman is a great roaming duo, uh, especially if Enchantress is able to pick herself up a Centaur or a Dark Troll Summoner inside the jungle to uh, start off. But just with the Enchant Slow as well, you can get the Shadow Shaman in range for those Shackles and just beat away at them. Uh, with those extra creeps that you have available. Sure. Also gives a decent amount to the push with those extra summons. And, I don't know, I think Bananas and Pajamas lineup is just all around a lot better. Um, yeah, Drow Ranger is very peculiar. We could be seeing a very fast Roshan, however, coming out from your family. I don't think level 1 is going to be an option, um, but uh, Zeus. What? <laughs> <laughs> I guess the Zeus isn't a bad idea, considering the fact there's a lot of very squishy heroes and bananas and pajamas, but Zeus is also another very squishy hero himself. He requires a lot of levels and farms to be able to start getting into that ganking carrying role, and... It's interesting, so to say. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, the positioning coming out from your family is going to be absolutely important. They cannot be anywhere near each other when they're in these team fights. If Joranger and Zeus are close together, a Time Walk Chronister is going to pretty much be the end of it for your family in these team fights. Um, yeah, very unconventional picks. I'm hoping that your family are able to win with these. Um, I don't know, it's just going to be something interesting to watch, and I'm, I'm hoping the best for them, but... Hopes aren't all that high. Uh, that said, I'll go ahead and introduce the Radiant team. We are going to have Shiva playing on the Shadow Shaman, heading towards the offlane to start us off with Farm With Me, going to be joining him as well. Death Prophet taking up 
Uh, taken up in the mid by Roy Mustang. The Enchantress is going to be played by Lizard, which will leave the faceless void. Solo safe lane for now, played by X in Grey. In the meantime, the opposite side, we do have your family. Currently one game behind, we've got Kranich on the Zeus. Cure with a K on the Wraith King. Valdo on Murano. Uh, Sun Mon Bodhi on Drow Ranger. And Fendel the Fag on the Scarath. Is that the right name? Scarath Mage. Yeah, that introduces our lineups nicely. Uh, currently, it looks like we're going to have both lanes being dodged, as the Faces Void is going to be solo up against the Tri Lane coming out from your family. And this is a lane that he really can't uh, stay in front of for very long. And I think they might decide to you know, make a little bit of a rotation. I think Farm With Me would be able to farm a little bit more in that lane, but still would be shut down very effectively. So I think this Faces Void is, I don't know, not going to have the greatest game impact to say the least, but if he's able to avoid dying and gets his level 6 a bit of decent time, I think that's all that Bananas and Pajamas need to get out of this faceless void. Yep, on the opposite side though, we do see a possible aggressive tri-lane also coming up from Bananas and Pajamas, and just look how aggressive the Shadow Shaman is playing. He's already there in the secret store, hiding behind the trees. Yeah, and as poorly as the Faceless Void is going to do in the bottom lane, a solo Geranger up against a Shadow Shaman Weaver with Enchantress in their jungle is going to do even worse. I don't think this Geranger can really show her face in the lane at all. Doesn't have any great way to escape. She'll have the Silence available, but that's absolutely it. Offlane Geranger is not a thing, and for good reason. She has no way to escape any oncoming aggression. If she shows her face into this lane, Shadow Shaman should be able to shackle her in place, and Weaver... We'll be able to chase her down. There's not a lot that she can do for now. Just going to soak experience, and I think this is the only way that Sun One can play this uh, lane. Mid lane, however, we have a smoke coming out from the Wraith King as well as Skyrath Mage looking to make a kill happen on this Death Prophet. Well, let's see if they're going to be successful. In the end, they are just going to back off and help out this Roranger who desperately needs it, leaving the Faceless Void to solo 1v1 versus Brana. Yep, and... Well, we do see the Zeus versus a uh, Death Prophet. Not a matchup we see that often in the competitive scene. I have to say that I probably prefer Death Prophet slightly, but both of them should be able to get the farm they need. Yeah, especially if Death Prophet gets herself up a stick. The only way that Zeus can really farm this lane is by spamming out his Chain Lightning. Centaurs are going to pull off the creep aggro and just be a general nuisance. No stops being thrown out just yet, and in fact, uh, will just be pulled out by the Enchantress, it seems. She's splitting them up, but... Mm, not really accomplishing much, just dancing around with these two centaurs. Yeah, but it's actually a little bit lucky she's managed to pick up two centaurs already in this game. Looking for a few stuns. Isn't going to be able to pick up one in the Wraith King, and probably just going to be farming that away eventually. Yeah, honestly, I would have liked to see her smoke up instead of trying to interrupt the pull with these centaurs. I think she could have done a lot more with them. Uh, manages to find herself a helper smasher as well. A decent ganking creep, although not the best. Um... Yeah, for now, she's just jungling away in the enemy's jungle. I think this is a little bit lost her opportunity for Lizard, however. She's had three good ganking creeps and hasn't made an aggressive move on any of the lanes. Yeah, a bit of a shame, but she's going to be able to pick up or at least secure the haste rune for the zoo, uh, for the death prophet. He's going to be able to easily bot that up and a very nice move right there. And Scarlet Mage is going to get forced back. He has been uh, clapped up and he might be going down right now, taking a whole bunch of damage. Is there anyone else there to help? But Cure's standing there, waiting up there, but the creep's gonna spot him. The Death Prophet's coming in to help as well, but the first kill's gonna come out from uh, the Weaver, taking out that Drow Ranger 1v1 effectively. Yeah, a very low probability kill on the Scarath Mage, especially if they didn't rotate down the Shadow Shaman or the Weaver. Um, in the end, the kill is going to be on the Drow Ranger, just nothing she could do once she got dis uh, disabled by the Shadow Shaman. Yep, lovely uh, move coming out there, and that's going to be a brilliant start for Bananas and Pajamas, who are looking to make this a very fast 2-0. Yeah, smoke coming up from the center as well as the Shadow Shaman. It's going to be popped instantly by Cure inside the uh, side, so a little bit of a misplay coming out from these two supports, but Enchantress still might be able to make a kill happen onto Kranich in mid, uh, depending on where he's sitting, but it looks like he's just going to straight back off, especially with Roy Mustang pushing out the wave. Yeah, but he's going to be trying to play a bit aggressive, and he might... Be a little bit worried, but in the meantime, Wraith King is going to spot out this possible gang, but taking a whole bunch of damage himself. The Sense Stun is going to come out. Cure might be in a bit of trouble right now. The right clicks are coming in. The shackle, Shadow Shaman Shackle is surely going to be the end. And Enchantress picks herself up and second kill of the game. Yeah, I don't know. Lizard has been able to make some good work happen. The Zeus in mid might be able to kill this Death Prophet. Hanging around a little bit too much. She's salving up as well as dropping the bottle. Lightning Bolt going to be off the mark coming out from the Zeus. 
Yeah, that had to be a little bit blind right there. As Stanley, uh, unfortunately, Death Prophet is faster than Zeus, and now looks like they're going to come in for the gank. The Shackles Stun Hex comes out, and well, that's going to be a very dead Zeus, and that's going to be very fast. 3 0, and they mount just want to start pushing now. Yeah, faces Void down in bottom. He's going to fall to one more auto attack from Mirana. Looks like it was just a case of shoot arrow, hit arrow, and Mirana going to get herself a solo kill. So looking good in this bottom lane. But still, faces Void has managed to find himself level 5 and is going to be nearing that Chronosphere very quickly. Um, not the end of the world, but still a good move coming out from your family. Yeah, Mirana finally hitting something. And we do see Death Prophet bottling up that illusion rune. But on the top lane, Drow. Well, Drow is doing okay in terms of farm. She is actually beating the Weaver, although she did give up that kill. Mm -hmm. Although she might be in a bit of trouble right now, just taking harassment damage from this Weaver. Although, doing some harassment damage back. I think Weaver could, like, dive this to her injury. As the Shadow Shaman Enchantress coming through Journey, she needs to be very careful. I think Sun One's as good as dead right now. Like, mm, you, you can't be at that tower. No, and she's just gonna get hackled up, shackled up, and killed. Yeah, not a face. chance. Helber Smasher steals the kill coming out from the Enchantress. But yeah, in the meantime, Zeus does get a return kill on the Death Prophet. Um, looks like they rotated in the Wraith King. Having that stun as well as the damage from Zeus was enough. But yeah, this Drow Ranger just isn't safe at all anywhere on the map, I feel. Um, there's not a great place for her to farm. We have a Hex going the way of the Skyrath Mage going to turn the chicken into a chicken. Now it turns on to Shiva, however, with that Arcane Bolt. Now the Silence coming out from the Drow. Not enough damage in the end. Now the Hellbear Smash is going to come onto the Skyrath Mage. Will there be enough damage? They're going to slow down the Enchantress as well. They might be able to get the return kill, and they will. Dranger picks up the last hit, and this might be two kills going her way, but the Weaver cleans up the Wraith King, and now it's going to start turning on the Drow Ranger. He doesn't have enough mana for any lockdown spells, and Drow Ranger is going to get at least one kill here. Double kill for Sun One as the Skyrath Mage also falls to the Enchantress. Hellbear Smasher finally cleaning up that kill south from the draw ranger and no kills happening just yet additional to that so two for one trade in the favor of your family yeah but as your family do bring something back a little bit as even that enchantress treat w creep will uh, start harassment along with that uh, weaver just trying to get out there gonna try and do some harassment damage as well but this top lane really has been action-packed through its first six minutes we're only six minutes into the game and already 10 kills yeah, I don't know. Ranger showing why she's a good hero, or at least her strengths as a hero. Uh, once she gets that level 6, she just does so much damage and putting that to good use. In mid, we have a smoke. They're wrapping onto Roy Mustang. The Bernie is in here as well, but they won't focus on the courier. They get the kill onto the mid hero, which is arguably more important. And yeah, not a lot of places for him to run. A lot of magic nuke damage coming out from this team. And this Zeus actually doing work right now, along with Morana. The Zeus and Morana both being the two highest last, hit last hitters in the game. Although net worth is in favor of Zeus, then the Weaver, who's been, you know, getting a lot of assists right now, all that lovely kill gold. Yeah, I know Kranich in the mid lane, usually you don't um, think of Zeus as a hero that's going to win his lane, or even trade even at that point. But the extra damage coming out from the drone just really helped him see us a lot more effectively. And, yeah, he's been involved in a lot of kills, but down in bottom they get Chronosphere onto Vlado, and Vlado just going to be ripped to shreds. Exorcism's and popped, I don't think really for that kill, but more for the tower push afterwards, as the tier 1 tower is probably going to be dropped to about half, I would expect. Yeah, they're just going to try and nuke down this Creep Wave and just simply go for the damage to the face. And what, is there going to be any attempt to stop this from coming out? Obviously, it is only level 1 Exorcism, like we said last time. Not the greatest ultimate in the world. And the Fortification is going to get popped, but no one's making a move down here. And it's still taking damage. In the meantime, Shadow Shaman is going to pick up the Zeus there. And Zeus is going to instantly buy back, try and TP in to help. Yeah, he should be able to get Shiva. Drops the Thunderbolt. Now the Zeus ultimate. They drop the Enchantress low as well. Wraithar Blast, one more cleave. Or rather, Chain Lightning coming out from the Zeus. will secure that kill, but in the meantime... Bottom tower not looking too healthy. Vlado going to be forced off it, and I think they'll be able to secure the last hit here. Who's going to get it? Let's see. Leap forward. Vlado looking for the double star fall damage. Roy Mustang falling low. He'll be able to get that kill, but gets bashed by X and Gray. Rana ultimate, no detection. He doesn't have the Chronosphere and faces Void. Not going to be able to secure the kill on the Marana. So in the end, skates away with like 10 HP. Yep, so lucky just one more hit was all it needed, but Marana, she didn't quite get the deny, but she did pick up the Death Prophet. As that is going to make the kills 8-8 eight to eight right now. The Death Prophet not having the greatest game in the world, as we do see the Wraith King going initiation onto the Void, but Void's going to get out nice and safely. No TP, though. Yeah, not really a high probability kill going solo up against the Faceless Void at this point in the game. Um, 
But yeah, I guess it's a decent time to check out the graphs. I don't think we're going to have some action for a couple more seconds at the very least. A slight advantage towards bananas and pajamas, uh, but not that much, about 1,200. But experience is in the favor of your family, just picking up the uh, kills later on the game when experience matters more. Wraith uh, King is going to show his face. He's not going to be slowed down, however. They just don't have the range to catch up with him. And Kira just going to be a swagger off uh, towards the river and make his way towards the rest of his team as well. So in the end, no initiation going to go down. The Exorcism is up again, but it looks like they might want to go for the Shadow Shaman. He's going to get out there ASAP, though. As Enchantress is trying to be as annoying as she uh, can be. Yeah, what mind games coming up from the Shadow Shaman? He went and looked like he was dropping a ward, but Shiva's going to be bursted down. He gets the Wraith Fire Blast as well as Lightning Bolt, but it's not going to be enough. Rory Mustang following low with the Silence on top of him as well as the Wraith King. probably going to scare the Shadow Shaman, but he gets a double kill on the Zeus as well as the SS. Wraith King going to lose his ultimate under tower after picking up the kill on the Shadow Shaman. There's several creeps in here, but they don't get the stun off, or slow rather. They get the Enchantress, but not the Hellbear Smasher one. With the Exorcism coming out from Rory Mustang, he might be able to make a turn cure. He's going to stun him up. I don't think I'll have enough damage, especially with the Exorcism Spirits and Enchantress. Gets the kill with Iduken coming out from the Seder. Doranger is in the vicinity, trying to turn onto Lizard, but not going to be enough. Leap forward. Vlado looking for the Dower Starfall damage. That burst damage is going to be enough to get the kill on the Enchantress. Well, Marana going to be forced to run away from the um, Priest, but in the end, the kill score is going to be 11 and 0 in the favor of Bananas and Pajamas. As that Death Prophet made a lovely move right there, picking up two kills and make, giving him a four in total. As that's going to be lovely towards the items that she's going to need uh, that for their attack ability. Yeah, in the meantime, they lose the tier 1 tower up in top to farm with me, who has been farming away quite nicely. Um, is going to be, or rather, actually his CS isn't that great, sitting about 32 at 10 minutes in. Uh, mostly because he was involved in a lot of those kills early, I thought he would have been able to pick up a lot more uh, given the free lane. Yeah, farm with me, not the fastest farmer here, but does have the ring of health as well as enough money to upgrade his boots should he want to do so. He'll TP down towards bottom and should be able to find his extra gold there, but this weaver is going to be a little bit longer to be online. But either way, we are going to see the ultimates are going to be coming up on both these two heroes soon, and they might not need it for this tier 1 tower. This tier 1 is just going to go down due to con constant harassment. Zeus trying his best, although the Scarf Mage is coming in as well, but Shadow Shaman, that is going to be... Well, almost going to be killed there on the Shadow Shaman. The Zeus is going to pick it up, and they desperately trying to get out there. The face is forward, good in the next to fall, and this is a disaster for Nons and Pajamas. Desperately trying to run away, and the Death Prophet running away from the Arcane Bolt, but the stun is going to give him enough vision, and instantly nuke down with that uh, Zeus plus the Scarlet Mage combo. Zeus is one of the heroes that does surprise. A surprising amount of damage. In fact, one of the most damaging heroes in those team fights with the um, just spam of his spells comboed with the static field as well. I don't know. They were able to secure themselves a lot of kills in that last team fight. I believe that was a four for nil exchange. And now the tier one tower also should fall. Draw Ranger very good at pushing into these towers, and yeah, I don't think it's going to stand for much longer. Nope. Very nice move right there. They are going to back out. Easily picked up in the dry range. Chronosphere onto but... two. Kranich as well as Sanwan are going to be caught out. They don't have enough damage, however, to bring down the Draw Ranger immediately. They should be able to chase her down. She drops the silence with the bug eating away at her. There's nowhere to run for Sanwan, and Sanwan's going to be dropped by farm with me, getting the last hit. Well, they at least catch one on the retreat, but using a Chronosphere, their next team fight might not go as well as planned. So they're gonna stick around in mid, and we're looking for more action even. Yep, yeah, we do see that Death Prophet now has level 2. This is when her hero comes online, so to say. The ultimate's going to be coming out in this tier 2. I'm not quite sure if uh, family can go defend against this. The arrow's going to come out, though. Going to hit Faces Void. Is going to backtrack that damage, but still doesn't really matter, though. Yeah, Tower just being chipped away at by the Serp Wars, and now the Exorcism committed. Not a lot that they can do, but... Cure coming in, possibly looking for a stun. He's going to be silenced up, and 2 2 tower going to fall to the Shadow Shaman. On the back lines, Enchantress trying to solo up this Skyrath Mage. She will be able to get that kill with one more impetus, but in the end, it will be a one for one trade. They stun up Roy Mustang, taking a lot of damage from the Zeus here. Cure drops the ult, or they get the ultimate from the Zeus, and a double kill for him as well. Cure falling low to the bug of the Weaver, and I think he's going to survive, or will he? But on the back lines, they're trying to chase down aforementioned Farm With Me, who is just shikuching away to safety. Oh, blink forward by Kranich. They're going to be able to get the lightning, but will they have enough damage? Farm with me does not have mana for ultimate. Well, actually, never mind. He has his ultimate, but not going to be forced to use it. And that's actually worth a mention that Zeus has a blink dagger at the moment. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Picking that up, I didn't actually see when Kranich was able to uh, farm that. But positioning items are great on Zeus. 
Great for catching him down with that mini stun and just able to position himself in a team fight so he's ensured to get that extra damage off. And well, a great aggressive item. I believe that we have, bo uh, excuse me, drums on both teams. One on the Death Prophet as well as one on the Marana. Um, but no mechanisms finished just yet. Yeah, but lovely little moves right there as we do see on the on the as the items in the game currently go. The real shame currently is the Death Prophet. who's only sat there on the. Uh, drums of endurance and boots and 300 gold not really having the greatest game only 50 last hits 40 minutes of the game on that mid hero we do have the shower shaman trying to go for that uh agonim scepter picked up two parts of it as we do see another kill coming out there yeah i know lizard was just caught out by an arrow and with the boink follow-up from the zeus too much damage going his way they might be able to find the death prophet in the end it looks like roy mustang is going to be fine arrow going to be off the mark and enchantress is still in there with spirit controlling the centaur conqueror Yep. On the other side, there is an interesting item being picked up right now, which is the Drow Ranger who's picked up that Mask of Madness. Obviously looking to be able to pick up just simply whole bunches of damage. as another attempt at initiation coming out, and Death Prophet might be in a bit of trouble right now with everyone in the enemy jungle coming towards her. I don't know, Mask of Madness on Drow Ranger, I don't think it matters. If she gets caught out um, anyway, I think she's going to die. Even if she has a BKB, it's only going to delay the inevitable. Um, so, just being able to get out as much damage as possible, I think, is generally a pretty good option with Dro. Uh, but you definitely want another positioning tool on top of that, uh, whether you get a Yasha for the extra movement speed, or possibly even a Blink Dagger, which is fairly common in the professional scene to make sure that you're not caught out, especially when you're split pushing. Yeah, but it looks like this T1 tower is going to simply go down to family and Right now, they're both equal. Well, only one tier one tower stands for in this entire game. Four bananas pajamas here on this top lane. But if we have a quick look at the experience in gold, it's currently about a 1.5k gold lead for bananas pajamas. Mostly because that additional tower they've managed to pick up. And including that tier two tower. While in terms of experience, it is in favor of family. Yeah, mostly attributed to their lead in kills, 13 to 17. They're going to go ahead and smoke into the Roshan pit. Draw Ranger could solo this one with level 11 marksmanship as well as the Mask of Madness, but with the rest of the team there, just so easy to pick up that. They give the Aegis to the Zeus. Not a huge fan of this move coming out from him, um, but with an extra set of mana, he'll be able to do a lot of damage in the team fights. Personally, I would have liked to see the Dro pick it up, um, but just feeling that... Yeah, with the Blink Dagger as well as the Mask of Madness, she'll be able to keep herself safe positioning-wise. Tier 2 Tower is going to be under siege by Bananas and Pajamas, trying to get something out of the trade for the Roshan. With Exorcism and Serpent Words, they'll be able to take this very quickly. Even with Zeus pulling the aggro off of the tower, it will fall to the Shadow Shaman. I don't think we're going to have an initiation, or will we? Moran Ultimate has been used. Looking for an arrow, not going to clip anybody on the side of Bananas and Pajamas. So for now, it's just going to be a little bit of a standoff. Tier 2 Tower for the Roshan. Yep, and I will say that's definitely in favor of my family right there. The tier 2 is a very nice tower to pick up, and it leaves only one tower left for, bana for, bananas in for bananas and pajamas to pick up, as the rest of this cast will be in English. But that Roshan's going to give Zeus another extra life and a huge amount of gold lead for uh, my family. Yeah, and I don't think that uh, losing that tier 2 is going to slow down my family much. They push very quickly with the Droringer as well as the Zeus, clearing out those waves. Uh, just by spamming out the Chain Lightning as well as the auto attacks from the Draw Ranger, I don't think she really needs much else to push down these towers. Honestly, I think Draw Ranger, if she had the Aegis, she would probably just go for the back door on that tier 1. But we'll wait for the creeps and now just going to mow it down. Yeah, after simply doing that huge amount of damage, look how much damage she does. Almost 200 per hit. And that's only 70 minutes into the game. That Mask of Madness giving her 100 extra attack speed. If you don't take it down quickly, you're not basically going to win a team fight against her. Pretty much. I think they need to find a good Chronosphere in order to engage. They throw a Wraithfire Blast away at the Death Prophet. I thought I heard a Zeus Ultimate being cancelled there. We have the Lincoln Sphere on the um, Weaver. But for now, they're just going to back off. Trying to chase him down. They get the Chronosphere onto two Kranich as well as Kira caught out. Scarlet Mage ulti dropped on top of him, but it's not going to do much damage to the Faces Void. They lose the Zeus Aegis as well as the uh, Aegis onto the Wraithing, or rather his ultimate. Kira's being focused down. However, there goes the Zeus ultimate. Farm with me. Gets a dominating spree as well as losing the Zeus. So, mm, I don't know. Your family felt confident that they'd be able to fight up against that. They lost a lot in order to try to push in that tier two. But in the end, yeah. 
A good move coming out from Bananas and Pajamas. I thought that that Chronosphere wouldn't be that game changing since they caught the two heroes that could come back after they died. But as shown, Wraith King as well as Zeus, just not a great way for them to get out of there when they're taking damage. No four staffs are way that their uh, allies could back them up with the exception of the Skyrath Mage Ultimate, which was thrown out. Yeah, the real problem was that the ultimate was caught on those two that could come back, but only when the rest of my family's team was basically off doing other things. And it meant that no matter what, what you did, it was always going to be a two versus five, which is, you know, I did the math and two equals less than five. Yeah, farm with me with that Lincoln Sphere. He's going to start hitting hard after his next item pickup. A Desolator would be wonderful up against uh, your family. Zeus, Draw Ranger, Marana, as well as the Scarth Mage would just absolutely melt to that. Um, and with the Lincoln Sphere available, I think he'll be um, safe enough in order to go for that. I think going for a BKB or another defensive item, potentially a heart, would be a mistake coming out from farm with me. Uh, so I'd like to see either an MKB or a Desolator next. MKB, because the Draw Ranger would eventually want to build into a Butterfly, as well as just being a great damage item for the weaver to deal with uh, desolator also would just give him a lot of damage immediately yeah that minus armor plus the uh, desolator oh. damage that zeus enchantress just got blown the heck up oh my goodness sun one that was like two auto attacks of zeus ulti and a lightning bolt and died in actually just a split second yeah but they're gonna try and use that to go and push all grouping up here in the middle and what are the ultimates looking like on the opposite side? We do have Void, he's got his Chronosphere up, but no mana for it. The Weaver is going to be able to bounce back, and the two other ultimates on the Shadow Shaman and Death Prophet are going to be available to possibly defend if they want to, but they're just simply going for the damage as Weaver's doing a whole bunch of damage right now to Drow Ranger, who's going to get the hell out of dodge, and that's going to be enough to scare them off. I don't know, Drow Ranger is feeling kind of like a Lycanthrope. Uh, in a sense, just being able to put so much damage onto those towers when they get the uptime and also making the creeps hit that much harder. When they have like two range creeps in the lane with that aura on it, they push out so quickly. I don't know. I don't think by any means that she's as strong as the Lycan, but in this draft at least is functioning like it. Yep, we are. Uh, we are starting to see this game kind of hit into a stalemate with the. Uh, Banana's pajamas pushing a lot depending on those item on those uh, non-scalable ultimates. While family have started taking a lead in terms of team fights taken, but we do see a smoke coming out. It looks like they may want to go for an aggressive push right now, coming out from Banana's pajamas. And Death Prophet may be the, I mean, Scarlet Mage may be the one they're going after. Oh, he might be the one they catch out. Oh, he pops a smoke. No time walk comes up from the face of this void. Cancel cast that one. And in the end, pretty much 100 gold going to be wasted by Bananas and Pajamas. Not the biggest loss, but they definitely would have liked to see a kill. Yeah, but Zeus picks up even more mobility, getting a 4-staff, with the Yule Scepter finally being finished on the uh, Death Prophet. Yeah, I, know, I think this is kind of the way that you have to play your Zeus. Um, he just needs to be able to stay out of harm's way. He's too squishy otherwise, and if you're able to uh, just kite around the enemy team and keep that damage coming, spamming out your chain lightning as well as lightning bolts. Yeah, I mean, we, we've seen it in these last couple of team fights that the Zeus has pretty much just been able to run wild and just does way too much damage. Yeah, but Zeus, he is starting to get into that period where he's the strongest. He's got almost uh, full levels and everything. But the only thing you can really get to increase his strength is that Veil of a Discord, if I remember what it's called. Yeah, but Kranich is 10-4-4 four four as far as the KDA, sitting at the top of everybody. In fact, doubling up the kills of the next highest. And, well, Zeus, renowned as a kill stealer with the ultimate uh, being used globally, but we really haven't seen the global potential of that ultimate. Usually it's just used straight in the middle of the team fights. It's not a kill stealer, it's a kill secure. <laughs> Definitely, and... Well, it's worked out for your family quite a lot uh, better than I thought it would. Um, yeah, I mean, with all of these positioning tools that they've had, they've had a lot easier time uh, with these team fights and making sure that they're always in the right place. However, right now, both these two teams are just going back to farming. The wards right now are a little bit scarce. Both of them on the same, uh, basically same spot. There's a counter ward here just completely missing the opposing uh, observer ward. And we are going to see Nimbus picked up by uh, Zeus. Can he use it to get some kills right now? Yeah, I don't know. I think the only one he can solo kill really is the um, support scene. Chanters of the Shadow Shaman. 
I think it's pretty risky to do so anyway. Uh, yeah, he could definitely get caught out if the Enchantress has her uh, creeps around, or if he just gets shackled in place to give them enough time to follow up. But for now, he's going to jump in with his team, and they might decide to lead out with him with that Invis rune. Um to see where the enemy team is, especially since it is nighttime. Uh, but for now, the entirety of Bananas and Pajamas are going to have the same idea, with the exception of the Faces Void who's farming up. Uh, but everybody else is smoked up. We're looking for a big clash as the Drow Ranger gets caught out, and she's just going to be bursted down. Shackle in place. Nowhere to run for the Drow. And, well, as much as we've seen the strengths, that's going to be the biggest weakness of the Drow. Just not a lot that she can do if she gets caught out. Oh, uh, this might not be over as there's a Wraithfire Blast being thrown towards the Dro Ranger. The Morano Ultimate's going to keep everybody in Viz, and the Shikuchi comes out with Farm With Me. They know that he's there. Kranich as well as the Wraith can catch eyes onto him. Um, I don't know, very sprawled out here is the, uh, both of the enemy teams, and in the end it looks like they're just all going to back off. Uh, actually, no, it looks like they may want to go for another initiation here on middle. The, boot, uh, the drums do get popped, the ultimate gets thrown out, and they do spot that and desperately trying to get out of dodge. As this is just blinking and forcing himself away, but still being chased down. Yeah, one of the other great uses of the Zeus Ultimate is just catching out the vision of enemy heroes. Kranich, uh, kind of very awkward situation. He's auto attacking the creeps, blinks north, and TP is out. I think he's going to be fine. Um, yeah, that was an interesting play coming out from the Zeus. Well, it was. I think he was just trying to give himself definitely enough time to be able to get out there. As you know, against the Zeus, with how far that Zeus is. They would be willing to pop that Chronosphere on him. Yeah. Well, down in bottom, Tier 2 Tower is going to fall to the Mirage. She got the last hit and farm with me. Did eat an arrow, but wasn't able to be killed. But in the mid lane, we have a huge engagement as a double kill goes away of Sun One, Shadow Shaman, as well as the Enchantress, the ones to fall. They'll farm up these Serpa Wards as well. Um, but yeah, just able to catch them out in a very awkward situation. Yep, a little bit of a shame there for Bananas and Pajamas. They did pop the ultimate on the Wraith King, who's level 11, so gonna be down for another roundabout three minutes-ish, three and a half, uh, well, two minutes-ish now. Yeah. Both these, as both these two teams, once again, go back to farming and doing what they're doing best, as this uh, Roshan is probably gonna be families pretty easily. Yeah, I mean, honestly, they could probably leave just the Wraith King and the Droninger in the pit while everybody else positions around. Double damage picked up by the Droninger, a perfect storm for them. Um, yeah, and this Roshan never stood a chance. I don't even think that Bananas Pajamas can really defend against this. They could Chronosphere in the pit with the Exorcism, and maybe they'll be able to do something, but I think it's just going to fall too quickly, even with no minus damage, or armor coming out from your family. They'll get it, but looking for initiation, they won't be able to find it. They Yule Scepter up the Skyrath Mage, and with the Exorcist, they might have enough damage. However, they're invis up with the Mirana, four staff away. Skyrath Mage will be the cost of that Roshan. I think everybody else will be able to make it out alive. Wraith King is hanging around very aggressively, and, well, they actually lose the Faceless Void uh, down over by the Ancients, and now Shiva also going to fall. And Roy Mustang just getting ripped to shreds by the Shore Ranger, who still has the double damage. That was like a three shot, my goodness. And now Enchantress is going to suffer a similar fate as the Thunderbolt and two auto attacks is enough to do her in, and wow, yeah, that was a really risky move by Bananas and Pajamas trying to initiate into your family at that uh, juncture. Yep, and the real issue we saw there was that Faces Void popped off his ultimate but completely whiffed it. He saw they all went invis and then tried to go for the big plays and ended up missing everybody and then getting killed for his own trouble. And the tier 2 is going to easily go down right there, and creeps or no creeps, and are they going to try and push down some tier 3s? Um, honestly, I think they could probably attempt it with no Chronosphere and no damage item on your Weaver. There's not a whole lot that they can do to defend. Yeah, but especially they will back the off for now. The Exorcism is also down. The Wards are up, so they can theoretically defend. Yeah, your family are going to back off and go systematically. Leave Joe Ranger up top to where she can get the Tier 2 Tower there, which, honestly, she could just backdoor. There's only 186 uh, health on that tower, and I think if she just uh, backdoored that and then blinked away, she'd be just fine. Um, well, yep. she'll bring the creeps at the very least. Yep, especially with all the damage she's doing, and those, uh, illusions will probably be just enough to be able to uh, take down this tower. Unless they send basically everyone over to defend it. Yeah, I don't know. It's just going to be a very methodical game coming up from your family. I thought they had a little bit of an opening. Um, they will drop the Faces Void, who will clean up these illusions and save the tower for now. I... I honestly think that backdooring that was the better move from the Draw Ranger. With everybody dead, they would have had to TP, and even if they TP'd in, she has the Aegis as well as Blink to get out to safety. Um, 
Well, yeah, just split push coming out from your family for now, just making sure that all their lanes are in a good situation. Do we have any big items that they're waiting up for? Well, right now we do see a total of two uh, Manta Styles on the family side, both Marana and a Dry Ranger picking those up. Uh, so we do see possible initiation coming out here, and Shadow Shaman just getting nuked down. The arrow going to finish him off, and that's going to be a very nice pick, and are they going to try and use that to push down some tier 3s? I don't see why not. Without the Serpent Wards, that's another big source of damage that Bananas and Pajamas are not going to have. They have Chronosphere available as well as Exorcism, so they need to be careful. But Faceless Void is just TPing down. They're leaving the Weaver up top as well, so this is going to be a 3 versus 5 for all intents and purposes. Drone is probably going to lose their life. They jump in. You will to immediately by the Death Prophet. However, the stun wasn't thrown up by Cure just yet. He silenced up as well, but they're just being zoned out as the Tier 3 tower takes a lot of damage, down to about half health, with no big spells being expended. Yeah, and that's always nice, just picking up that to damage and being able to uh, take down those towers without uh, having to give up anything or take anything in return. It's just a win for family. Yeah, I think they'll back off here as Grandish goes towards the top lane to counter push that one, as well as the Draw Ranger presumably going to farm up the mid. Uh, but once they have those lanes pushed out, they'll have another chance to put some damage onto these tier 3s. And really, it was... Just two-thirds of that damage, or a little bit less than that, um, actually, on that tier 3, given to your family for pretty much nothing. Yep, well, we do see that Faces Void has brought up a BKB, but I feel that a BKB is, to some extent, a losing item, in a way. Just because of, yes, it gives him defense ability, yes, it stops those stuns from coming out, but it doesn't really give him anything that a Void actually needs. And since he's so far behind in terms of farm against the rest of the uh, heroes, he can't afford that survivability. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think you're damned if you do, damned if you don't in this situation. They just have so much damage coming out from your family. The magical damage from Zeus and the physical damage from the Drill Ranger. Not to mention the supports. Um, Wraith King as well as Sky Mage are not uh, too shabby when it comes to damage either. Then you also have a Marana to factor in with that uh, Maelstrom, presumably going to be complete Mjolnir before the next high ground push. As the last tier 2 tower is going to go down for Bananas Pajamas. And as that does go down, we do have a quick look and just show the experience. It's 15k in favor of my family, with the gold being roughly the same at 10k. And a 10k gold deficit is very difficult to come back from. Yeah, not to say it's impossible. They throw out the ultimate and down in bottom, and they get an easy kill on the Shadow Shaman. Now we're chasing down the Weaver. He has Shikuchi, and they popped his Lincolns. I think he'll be fine. Blink forward by the Wraith King. Not able to connect with the second stun, or will he? It's disjointed by the Invis, and farm with me is just fine. He's going to be able to get out, TPing away, and looks like he is trying to go for that uh, Desolator right now with the Demon Edge in his, uh, in, I mean, MKB, with the Demon Edge in his hand. Yeah, I, I like the item choice, but I, he kind of needed it like five minutes ago. To be honest, this uh, Weaver is just not getting there. His farm is pretty lackluster. He got some early kills, um, and in fact is sitting at 403, which is a very respectable KDA. But his impact in these last couple of team fights has pretty much been non-existent. Uh, maybe he throws out a couple of auto attacks to get some vision with the bugs, but that's about it. Yeah, but when you compare his uh, 12k net worth against the 16k net worth of both the Marana and the Drow Ranger, and you can start to see why he's falling behind. He's behind by basically one big item as the Magellan there has been picked up by the Marana. And that's going to be even more creep clear, even more pushing ability, and even more damage. Faceless Void forced to use his 10 second BKB in mid up against the Wraith King as well as the Scarlet Mage. Just too much damage. He TPs back to base but then cancels it as he picks up the DD, not wanting to give that away to the Drow Ranger. And Drow Ranger's next big item that she's up on the Weaver with is going to be the Daedalus. So... If the heroes weren't falling fast enough earlier, they're pretty much going to be one or two-shotted um, by this Drow. Yeah, but the Drow, we haven't quite really had quite a good look at her new items as she has picked up that uh, Chrysalis. And, you know, with 201 damage plus the 94 extra bonus, that's almost 300 damage, which means her crits are going to be roughly uh, around about 500-ish per shot. Yeah, it's it's really scary, especially if you're an Enchantress or a Shadow Shaman. Usually Enchantress is fairly tanky up against physical heroes with the um, maxed out Untouchable, but Dragonrager is still attacking fast enough to get those two auto attacks necessary to rip through. Enchantress is quite honestly pitiful base strength. 
Yeah, all of these low HP heroes against this Drow is going to be a huge issue as the Drow is going even further when Eagle Song obviously going to be getting that butterfly. The Weaver will be disregarding that soon, but again, not quite getting that farm fast enough. I think yeah. he's going to be getting that MKB after the uh, Drow is going to be getting her butterfly. Yeah, as far as the patient is concerned, this is not the greatest game to be getting your butterfly. Faces Void negates it with his um, Chronosphere, and in fact, we're going to have an Ethereal Blade picked up by the Drone Ranger. I love this. I, I, I love this. Great stats coming for the Drone Ranger, and great for saving your allies in the Chrono. Also, a great finishing move with the amount of agility that she has. It's going to be 210 multiplied by 1.6, is it? Or two times, actually. Uh, that's been buffed, so you are going to have effectively a Dagon level 3, and oh, Zeus ultimate up in top lane. is He tries to go on Vlado, but to no avail, the Yule Scepter up the Marana, and, well, leap away TP, she's going to be just fine, no way to cancel that. Whoa, they get the vision, the Hex coming out from the Shao will be enough, and now the Shackles, they'll get a kill for a kill at the very least. I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm in love with this Draw Ranger Ethereal Blade pickup, yeah. Draw Ranger, Blink, uh, Chrysalis, and Manta Star. She is very, very farm right now. And doing huge amounts of damage and, you know, just showing us maybe that Drow isn't as bad as pick as we thought it was going to be. Well, in, in this game especially, they've put it to good use. Yeah. <laughs> not, not a whole lot else to say after the uh, little bit of action we had on top. It is going to slow down for a little bit more. Um, Monkey King Bar is online for the Weaver, but with no evasion on the side of my family, the effectiveness of that item is going to be negated a little bit, although it will give him a lot of base damage to deal with, and he's actually going to be a right-clicking threat in the next couple of team fights, but nowhere near the threat that's going to come out from the Drew Ranger, hitting for about 350 a pop at shooting, let's see, with the Mask of Madness enabled, she's going to be hitting three attacks per second. And then also the crit chance from Crystalis is just ridiculous. Oh, Shadow Shaman, I think he's dead. Shiva tries to TP out. I think they can get this kill. Cancels it. And yeah, just ripped to shreds by Drow and Zeus. Yeah, I, you put all those numbers together and it equals a lot of damage. Yeah. I mean, usually 609 crits are not the most impressive. I mean, I say that. That's still a lot of damage. But yeah, mostly Drow Ranger just attacks so quickly with the Mask of Madness as well as the agility that she has stacked up. Run ultimate use. They're looking to get aggressive into the enemy jungle, and I think whoever they find is pretty much going to be dead. Chronosphere is online for the Faces Void, so they might be able to catch a good one. Let's see how this is going to break down. They stop the Faces Void, focus it on to start us off. Drencher getting a couple of misses, but the arrow from long range will get that kill. They get Sky with Mage ulti. It's not doing that much damage, but it is going to be enough. And now the Ethereal Blade from long range for the Drone Ranger. They're going to blow her up with the Magic Gun. She used herself to delay it, but one more auto attack is all they need, and Cranich actually gets the last hit with the Chain Lightning. Four for zero is going to be the damage of that last team fight and the courier is also going to die that was the dire courier i believe oh who picked that up actually where where was that i am actually not quite sure but it was over by way. roshan i'm not sure what happened but yeah, yeah that's the barracks down <laughs> look over at the roshan pit for a second and the barracks is already dead yeah just look how much damage you're doing they want to go for the uh, throne they just want to go tier four the buybacks are going to get forced out but they only have uh, a buyback on the drow the chronosphere they're going to have to defend for 12 seconds, and the fortification might do it. As Just look at the illusion damage on its own. This tower is just getting destroyed. Yeah, I don't know. Draw Ranger is working out, uh, to say the least. She now has another 4,300 gold on top of that all. They have the Roshan, and let's uh, count the seconds before this Roshan dies. With Draw Ranger auto-attacking on top of her, or Roshan him, I guess. I don't know. It's it. going to be a it. Yeah, Roshan. Um... Yeah, it's, it's going to be over very fast. And that's your Aegis. Now for the Maranas, they don't have enough items. And Death Prophet comes in. She's going to die to start us off. They have the Yule Scepter to delay things. BKB popped by the face of void. He gets Chronosphere onto two. They try to focus down Sun 1. Sun 1, it looks like he's going to die. So the Drone dying in the beginning of this fight is huge. But he's going to live with the Ethereal Blade. Mantisal, he's getting out of there. The Urn Tick might be enough damage, and it looks like it will. But the Maran is starting to clean up house. They lose the Death Prophet. Now the Weaver also falling low. He's going to die. Time lapse is back. Gets stunned. Rampage for Vlado. Buy back from the Drill Ranger, I think that's game. GG. Yeah, the GG does get called, and that is going to be a one-to-one -one score coming out. None of the pajamas, they had a nice push, stra push strategy, but family brought it back, and with well, an interesting Drill Ranger pick that worked out lovely for them.
Yeah, I don't know, an entertaining game to watch, and if you do want to watch it again, the VODs will be uploaded to youtube.com slash uh, later on today. You can check those out. I've been one of your casters today. I've been GrandisV, and if you like my casting, you can follow me at uh, GrandisV on Twitter as well as Twitch. And I've been joined by this game, and he'll probably come back for the next series uh, by Banshee. And where can they find you? Well, I'm at Banshee at both twi uh, Twitch TV and Twitter, and also Steam, obviously. And we are going to be, I'm going to be coming back for the next game, which is going to be K5 versus MP, uh, NPNG. We should be into that game very quickly, so stay tuned. Um, we'll have those games coming up shortly. So thank you for watching. We've been uh, Hefla TV. You can follow us on our English channels at Hefla TV 1 and 2. And we also have some other language supported at 3 and 4. We have German as well as German as well as 5 and 6. We have Chinese cast every once in a while. So you can check out those as well. Uh, so... For now, signing out, but see you soon with some more Dota.